It absolutely blows my mind that they'll have these youth lined up in a military formation doing jumping jacks and putting their arms behind their backs in the Nazi colors. In the Nazi colors. Now, Hitler's Jugend were blonde-haired, blue-eyed, good little Nazi youth, and now they're targeting minorities, people of color, through city year. I mean, it's for everybody, but who are the leaders in these commercials? They're African-Americans, they're Latinos, they're people that are supposed to identify with the new overlord. But they're wearing the same exact frickin' colors as the Nazis. They're wearing red, white, and black uniforms. It's blowing my mind. Jason, give me some other examples of how we're being prepped. Oh, absolutely, Jason. They, they they do this with the cartoons. You know, they bring the cartoons out there, you know, with like the global warming stuff, like the SpongeBob mm -hmm. baloney, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they got the, you know, they'll have like the Simpsons on there. They'll have their global warming on there. They'll show the nuclear plant sites, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll do that with video games. They'll put like all this, you know, army related stuff in there. It's all training us, you know, getting us prepared, getting us like used to the, to the system that they're installing. I mean, it's just mind-blowing. It blows my mind sometimes. You know, I used to be one of these people back in the day that I didn't want to believe, like, our government could be so corrupt, so evil. But I started listening to Alex a long time ago. And when I started listening to him then, I kind of thought, like, Alex was kind of, like, you know, crazy. I thought Alex was just, you know, moonbag crazy. But mm -hmm. after a while, I started to see exactly what that man was talking about. Yeah, and, me too, and it blew my mind. And he just, he blew my mind. Mm -hmm. well, he's well, that, I mean, he's that amazing. I mean, once I started to really see it, I was like, you know, I just kind of, my heart dropped, man, put it, to put it honestly. Oh, I, I, let, let me give people an example of my awakening. I thank you for the call, Jason. Uh, when I started studying 9-11 before I came across Alex Jones, I was already losing sleep. I, I couldn't believe what I was reading. I couldn't believe what I was seeing in some of the raw videos I was downloading off of uh, some of the file share networks, Kazaa, Morpheus, those were the ones that were around back in the day when I started looking into this in 2002. It was way before torrents were even really big. And I was disturbed then. Then I come ac across Road to Tyranny on the web, this 77 megabyte real player file, some of the worst video compression I had ever seen in my life. It was off sync audio wise by about 10 seconds, two and a half hour film. I watched the whole thing with my roommate. And me and my roommate are looking at each other just like, this guy is crazy. None of this can be true. This can't be true about it. Even the, you're watching the OKC stuff, Oklahoma City bombing, and it's blowing your mind. And then you're saying, I'm going to prove this guy wrong. At least that's what I did. And I went through every single claim in that movie. And in a relatively short period of time, I was able to verify 80 to 90 percent of it. And at the end, when he's talking about global warming, you know, I had grown up thinking Clinton was the best thing since breakfast. We didn't have war. We had a great economy. Global warming was real. We're going to save the planet. And he's telling me global warming's not real? Come on, Alex. But sure enough, you look into it, it's about a carbon tax. He was correct. This is about blowing out the U.S. economy, a consolidation of power on the bank front. And here's, here's another mainline article. Regulators close banks in Colorado, Michigan, and Minnesota. Regulators have shut down Warren Bank in Warren, Michigan, and two small banks in Colorado and Minnesota, boosting the number of failed U.S. banks this year to 98 as loan defaults rise in the world's financial climb, the worst financial climate in decades. And here's what they're doing. They're going to squeeze out all the smaller banks so that they, again, can consolidate power to the IMF, the World Bank, the FDIC, the Federal Reserve, a new monetary system. And get rid of the dollar. Why? For global governance. So we can all become unified under one tyrannical police state. I don't want to believe it. I don't want to be doom and gloom all the time. Quite frankly, I would rather be sucking back some beers, playing some softball with some buddies, or maybe shooting some hoops, drinking a Gallerati. That would be nice for me. But I can't sit back and just allow this to happen without using the biggest tool God gave me, and that's my yapper. So we're going to come back. We're going to take your calls, go over some more breaking news. It's the Info War with Jason Burmis. PrisonPlanet.tv, Infowars.com. Oh, you think a stimulus plan is going to save the economy? Well, not according to Reuters. Stimulus can ease job pain for U.S. states and cities. The fiscal crisis hitting most U.S. states and cities is now adding to the country's workforce woes, with more than 20% of the jobs of the country lost last month uh, coming from government sector. See, they're trying to say the government's getting smaller. No, they're, they're downsizing 
the state governments and giving the federal governments more funding and power. That's, again, what this is about. And they're going to give another stimulus package. It ain't no stimulus. It's a bankster takeover. Again, consolidation of power. But a lot of you guys have small brains out there and you can't wrap your minds around it. I've got a small little brain. I mean, I know I do. But my brain's been hit with this information so much, I'm almost desensitized to it. I wish that tomorrow I woke up and all this stuff wasn't a reality. But that's not how the real world works. And there will be people out there that will willfully go to the camps and they'll say, well, we had that pandemic, we needed to do it. Or, you know, we had that terrorist attack, we needed to do it. The government loves us. They're here to help. They're here to restore order. I'm in compliance. They love to give you buzzwords that you can latch on to as some kind of a security blanket. Well, you bow down to your globalist masters. All right, let's keep taking the calls. Let's go to Scott in Washington. Scott, you're on the line. Hey, Jason. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, for that lady who had called up earlier on defending either the carbon tax or this cap and trade or whatever carnation that it is, uh, she might be interested in doing a search engine of Dennis Kucinich and his vote of no against this thing and him calling it exactly for what it is. And basically he said two things. One, it would do nothing to uh, 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 curb uh, emissions. And two, it was nothing but a derivative, nothing but a derivative scheme. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's one of the most left members of the Congress as it is, but that's something that hardly ever got any media play. Yeah, because so, they don't yeah. like Kucinich because a lot of times he supersedes the left-right paradigm. He is left on a lot of issues. But again, let's not forget, Kucinich is the one guy that sat there and tried to impeach Cheney. He's the one guy that gave out of the 33 articles of impeachment of the Bush administration, three regarding 9-11. Dennis Kucinich scares the establishment. That's why he's constantly the butt of jokes in comedy shows and he's portrayed as a nutball. No, he's one of the few people working on the Hill with someone like a Ron Paul who is trying to look out for, you know, the little guy, me and you. Yeah, so, you know, the left might want to consider that the next time they think it's so wonderful. The mm -hmm. second thing that I wanted to say real quick, uh, that Becky Shea character up there in uh, Harden, uh, Montana up there, mm -hmm. you know, I know everybody is saying that, uh, you know, she's an unwilling dupe and all of that kind of stuff. But, you know, I have a really hard time believing that this woman worked for, what, nearly 20 years for the Billings Gazette as an investigative reporter. You know, I have a hard time believing that she doesn't know or doesn't realize uh, what she was getting herself into. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I, that she knows. Let me, let me say this, Scott. I think she knows that there's corruption abound. But she also knows she just got the biggest paycheck of her life, that she's driving around in a new SUV with a gas card. Uh, she's probably getting paid three times as much as she ever got paid as a Billings Gazette reporter. And let's not forget, a Billings Gazette reporter reports a lot of mainline things. So she probably doesn't see the bigger picture of why it would be wrong to train uh, foreign military and foreign mercenaries on U.S. soil. She doesn't probably understand why it's not good to have a foreigner with 17 separate aliases and all these convictions. I mean, she, I would think that the convictions on crime would set off alarm bells. But how many people out there go along to get along, uh, Scott? And how many people lie to themselves to make themselves believe that it's not as bad as it really is? I'd say the majority of the populace, wouldn't you? Yeah, it might be one of those things that that adage about keep your friends close and keep your enemies closer. With well, I don't even think she sees them as the enemy, Scott. I really don't. I think she's looking at this paycheck like, wow, this could change my life, and I will go along to get along. I thank you for the call. We're going to keep taking your calls after this. If you missed any of the program, go check out the podcast at theinfowarrior.com.